Okay, we have one more concept to talk about in this curve fit idea, which what we're going to show in the next set of lectures when we actually start playing with it on MATLAB is that if you start to do, if you have a lot of points like end points and you try to do uh, a polynomial fit that goes through all the points, you get this tremendous amount of polynomial wiggle. And that's problematic for actually doing any kind of extrapolation interpreta interpolation exercise. So what we want to start thinking about instead is some alternatives around that that don't suffer from this polynomial wiggle. And probably the most important one out there is the idea of a spline. Okay. Now, what a spline is, uh, so, okay, let's take a step back. What we did before with the polynomial fit is we derived one function with coefficients that span the entire range of our data. The spline takes a very different approach. The spline pieces together a bunch of cubic polynomials to make this very beautiful fit to your data that's very smooth and, and, and nice, but it doesn't try to approximate the entire function over the entire range with one function. It pieces together a bunch of functions in a principled way to give you a very nice result. So if you remember, uh, what we have are a bunch of points. Right? And We'd like to go ahead and now, again, this series of lectures is all about, I want to write down some representation of a function that goes through, through all the points. It's not just a best fit curve, but now actually goes through all the data. Uh, so depending upon the kind of application you need, this is the kind of thing you want to look at. So here's going to be the philosophy of the spline. The spline is going to say, hey, look, what I'll do is I will write down, if I have a bunch of points, I'm going to try to do this fit through these points. And what I'm going to do is, for every set of data points between them, I'm going to say, what's the best cubic that goes there? Now, why a cubic? So here's where we're going to start talking about uh, where the spline is so powerful. So the cubic we're going to start talking about, if I'm in the kth, kth interval, then I'm going to write down this cubic. And here is generically your, your, your cubic function. Just got uh, squared there, plus OK. So it's got a linear term, quadratic, and a cubic term. And notice, for a cubic, I have four unknowns. Okay, so each one of these little cubic pieces, four things I don't know that I've got to determine. Okay, so that's going to be uh, part of our exercise is to figure out how I'm, I'm going to get all those uh, uh, equations to determine not only the four parameters for this guy, then I have to go over here, solve the four parameters here, here, and all the way through all my data. Now we're going to go, not going to go really into a lot of detail, and by the way, this approximation here holds when you're in the interval from x of k point to the x of k plus first point. All right, so if this is the k point, this is the k plus first point, this, is, this approximation only works right there. And presumably, there's other points over here, too. Okay. All right, so what are the constraints? We're just going to do an equation count. All this is going to come down to is solving ax equal to b. It's as simple as that. And we're going to basically say we have so many unknowns, so many constraints, match them up, do a backslash, you're done. That's all the, that's all the spline's going to do. So what are the constraints that I want to start thinking about? So first of all, constraint number one, s of k at x of k has to go through the data. If I'm looking through here, and this cubic is in here, it has to go through the point. That's constraint number one. Constraint number two. 
the spline is going to look continuous. So this spline is going to connect to this spline. So in other words, at the boundaries, they're going to have to match. S of k at x of k plus 1 is equal to S of uh, k plus 1 at x of k plus 1. So I have a spline here and a spline there. So this is the x of S of k spline. This is S of k plus 1 spline. At this point, they have to match. So I have a spline here, spline there. That's the point they have to match, right here. And that's what that constraint says. At that point, it has to be continuous. Now I made this comment earlier. So if you learn nothing else from differential calculus is that uh, derivatives tell you something about the slope of functions. Okay? And if you, have, uh, if you have a nice smooth derivative, it means your slopes are nice and smooth. Okay? Um, and here, what's going to be the constraint is that you're going to enforce that the derivatives are also matched at that point. Not just the derivatives, the second derivatives as well, the inflection points. So this is going to make it, in some sense, the, the colloquial way to say it is it's going to be extra smooth. It's going to be not only the first derivatives match, but the second derivatives match. So this is going to be a very uh, strong constraint on this. So how would we write that? Well, there's the derivative. Again, at that point, it has to match the derivative of the next point. Also, second derivative. Okay, so those are our constraints. Let's do a count. I have this many constraints. So first of all, if I have uh, n plus 1 points, right, which I do right here. So there's n plus 1 points. How many intervals are there? Well, if there's n plus 1 points, I have n intervals, right? The intervals are, for instance, from x0 to x1, x1, x2. So if n plus 1 points, I have n intervals. Okay? So how many unknowns do I have, and in how many constraints do I have? So for every interval, I have a spline. So my unknowns is I have n intervals with four unknowns. That's my number of unknowns, 4 times n. Right? So for every interval, there's, there's four spline parameters to figure out. So those are my unknowns. So I'm going to go ahead and think about uh, those 4n unknowns that I've got to solve for. Now, how many constraints do I have now? So let's talk about the number of constraints. So first, there's this one here. It has to go through all, all the data points, where there's n plus 1 data points. So this one here tells me there's n plus 1 constraints there, because it has to go through every data point. Now, interestingly, here, this says the solution and derivatives and the second derivative have to match every single one of the points. Well, how many points are there? Well, there's all these points, but notice the endpoints don't have anybody to match to. So although there's n plus 1 points, the first and the last point, there's no matching condition there. So it's all the endpoints that are in the interior. So if I have n plus 1 points, and I take away the two endpoints, then this is n minus 1 points, n minus 1 points, and n minus 1 points. Okay. So those are my constraints that I have and that I have to worry about. This gives me a total of 4n minus 2 constraints. Uh-oh, so here's the problem. I have this many unknowns and this many uh, constraints. So it's an underdetermined system. So typically what happens in splines is that people enforce uh, two more conditions. 
oftentimes they'll say things like, oh, at the ends, let's make the second derivative zero. So the far end on the right and on the left, I'll make the second derivative zero, which gives me two extra constraints. And then I have a match of the unknowns to the constraints. So all of a sudden, I have uh, consistency acro uh, across the whole thing. So in either case, all this is leading me to is a giant AX equal to B. And this AX equal to B solves for all the splines that I have in my system. And these splines now go very smoothly through all the data. They have a con it's a continuous function, goes through the data. The first and the second derivative are also continuous, so it's going to be very smooth. But remember, every interval is an individual spline or individual cubic, right? So you don't have a global function for the whole thing. You have local fits. So what ends up happening with a spline, with a spline, you can certainly do uh, interpolation. You can certainly use this to give you values for points in between, but it does not work for extrapolation because the spline only works on the interior of the data and it does not have a way to compute values that are outside of your data set. So this is not good for extrapolating any kind of values of meaning. Okay. We're going to see this in practice in a moment.